I'm I have started uh, the recording, and uh, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. T. Yen Lan from Princeton University, but uh, speaking to us from California. Uh, we'll talk about multi target detection and its application to the cryo EM reconstruction problem. Over to, to you, T. Yen. Okay, thank you for the um, invitation um, of um, Vitaly to attend this um, conference. So in today's talk, I'm going to talk about like um, the multi-target detection model on like 1D signals, 2D images, and then in the end, um, the application to the reconstruction problem in cryo-electron microscopy to um, like look at the structures of proteins. Oops. So this um, work, it's um, a joint work with um, Professor Amit Singer at Princeton, um, Professor Nicola Bumo at EPFL, and Professor um, Tamir Bendori at Tel Aviv, and Dr. Nicholas Marshall, who's also a postdoc at Princeton. So um, in the uh, model of multi-target detection, I mean, in, this, in the setting of um, the 1D version of this model, we can consider like a very long measurement, like the um, green um, signal uh, on, the, um, on the first panel here. So we have a very long measurement. And in this long measurement, there are many identical um, shorter signals embedded uh, with unknown location in this long, long measurement. And at times um, we consider like um, noise um, in this, um, like long uh, measurement. And our goal is to reconstruct the underlying um, short signal from this long measurement without knowing like uh, their um, individual locations. And um, this is what um, the 1D version of multi-target detection is about. So obviously when the signal to noise ratio is high, then we can easily identify the individual locations of these shorter signals, and then do pairwise alignment to accurately estimate um, the form of these um, short signals. The interesting problem comes when the signal to noise ratio is low, especially um, like say, for example, look at the, um, the, the figure on the right, which is the blue curve, where um, the signal to noise ratio is uh, one fourth. So um, in this case, uh, we cannot um, even see like the, we cannot even identify the short individual short signals. So uh, that means pairwise alignment, it's not feasible. So we have to think of way to make use of the information from the um, overall long measurement to like reconstruct these um, short signals. And um, we, um, would ask the important question whether we are able to reconstruct the signal accurately um, without like even trying to figure out their individual location because these are um, just like nuanced variables for us. Um, we don't care about um, where the individual signals are located in the, in the long measurement, but instead uh, we just want to know the um, like an accurate estimate of these um, short signals. And we also want to know like uh, at the high noise level, how many observations are needed um, in, in order to estimate this signal. So uh, in other words, we want to know the sample complexity, how the sample complexity would scale with um, the noise level. So um, formally we can like, um, we can model the, um, the long measurement um, here I represented as Y as the um, linear conv convolution of two parts. The first one, it's our underlying signal um, um, denoted by X. So this um, X, it's a signal of length L. And um, the other part, it's a binary sequence um, S. So S has length of M minus L plus one. And N, it's the length of our long uh, measurement Y. So um, this um, linear convolution, it's further contaminated by um, like some, by uh, Y Gaussian noise, uh, also of length um, capital N. 
and we assume that we know the uh, we know the variance of this uh, Y Gaussian noise. And also, uh, like uh, I mentioned before, the length of our short signal X, it's much um, smaller than the length of the long measurement uh, Y. So here I denote like L, it's much smaller than M. So um, we can first uh, explore the meaning of the binary sequence S. So um, like in this setting of linear convolution, we can see that the non-zero entries of um, the binary sequence S indicate where each individual short signal X starts um, in the long measurement um, in Y. So um, in this uh, work, we assume that the um, short signals are well separated in the long measurement Y. So then we require that the consecutive non-zero entries of our binary sequence S should be separated by at least um, two L minus one um, positions in the, in, um, in the long measurement. So as a result, um, the short signals would occur um, at least uh, once at a distance, at least one, sig one um, um, like one signal apart in our long uh, measurement. So this is like a, 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 this is like a basic assumption in the multi-target detection model. And in the end of the talk, I'll discuss how we might be able to re relax this assumption uh, in order to consider the more general case that they can be separated um, like with arbitrary distant distribution. And like I said before, uh, we don't care about um, the like uh, accurate estimate of the binary sequence S and we treat it as just nuisance um, variable. And um, what we um, only care about is uh, it's to estimate the signal X. So when you look at the like formulation of um, how we generate this uh, noisy long measurement Y, you might, um, recall like um, some formulas you've ever seen in the field, in, in papers in like um, blind deconvolution, um, where you also have like um, two unknown signals convolved each, each other and maybe contaminated with some form of noise. And um, your um, end goal is to uh, reconstruct um, the, um, the both, both signals um, from the noisy measurement. But here um, the goal is slightly different that we only care about one of um, the signal, which is the short signal X. And uh, we don't care about like uh, how to accurately estimate the binary sequence S. So um, this makes um, our problem like uh, a bit easier than the blind deconvolution. So, um, in order to estimate the, the in order to, oops, oops. In order to estimate the short signal X, we have to um, have the observation that uh, we, we can estimate, we can reduce our data in a form that it's indifferent um, about the individual shifts of the short signal in the long, uh, measurement Y. So uh, we can reduce our data into some like shift invariant uh, features. Um, so we like um, recall like the concepts of um, in like auto correlation analysis. So we define, we first define the first order auto correlation, which is simply the average pixel value. So we sum up the pixel values in our long measurement and then take the average. Then we can use this quantity to estimate just the sum of values in our short signal. And as long as the, um, the length of our long signal, um, it scales um, like, um, like um, similar to um, the signals, the, the sigma square, which is the variance of our noise, then we can um, like accurately estimate the sum or the mean of our short signal X um, from the first order autocorrelation or the average pixel value of our long measurement. 
Um, as for the second order correlation, we uh, multiply our original long measurement y with a shifted copy of itself, uh, and then um, sum this product to uh, obtain the second order autocorrelation with respect to like different shift values L. So here we restrict the shifts to be just um, like within the lens of our short signal L. So you can easily see from um, our assumption that the signals has to be uh, well separated in our long measurement that um, this second order autocorrelation of our long measurement would give us an estimate of the second order autocorrelation of the um, short signal X. So here, because we uh, multiply um, the, long, the noisy long measurement with itself, so we need the lens to scale similarly or like more than um, the fourth power of um, sigma in order to accurately estimate the second order autocorrelation of the short signal X. So similarly, we can define the third order autocorrelation, which uh, we multiply the, the long measurement Y with two of its um, shifted copies by um, L1 and L2. Here, we also restrict um, the values of L1 and L2 to be within the lens of the short signal X. So um, because here we uh, multiply three uh, like um, copies of the noisy measurement Y, we need um, the lens to scale similarly or larger than the six power of Sigma in order to accurately estimate the um, third order autocorrelation of the signal X, uh, the, short, the short signal X. So um, we um, can use these um, like three reduced quantity, say the first three orders of um, autocorrelations to reconstruct the, um, the short signal X, even without knowing um, their individual locations um, in the long noisy measurement Y. So um, we can like compare this situation with the case um, that we know the um, values of the binary sequence S. So, um, which is the situation that we know the individual um, occurrences of the short signal X in the long measurement Y. So if we do know um, their individual locations, we can simply um, sum uh, the, like, the crop signals from the long measurement. And then uh, we can accurately estimate um, the short signal X, um, given that um, our um, lens and um, scale similarly to like sigma square. So because um, the signal to noise ratio is inversely proportional to sigma square. So here I write n um, greater or similar to one over um, SNR. So this is the case when we know their individual location. But um, given the situation um, of high noise level and not knowing um, the binary sequence S, we um, need up to the third order autocorrelation to estimate the short signal X. So this makes a big difference that we need um, the length of our long measurement Y to scale similarly or greater to one over sigma cube. So this, um, it's a very like huge difference in sample complexity uh, with respect to the signal to noise ratio um, of the long measurement Y. So um, given the reduced um, data uh, of from the low measurement, uh, which, which are the three, um, like first three orders of autocorrelation, we can construct like a least square problem to, um, to like optimize with respect to the short signal X to fit these um, three um, orders of autocorrelations to solve for, um, to solve for the underlying signal X. And, and in this figure, I show you um, such reconstructions for uh, measurements generated at uh, many different um, noise levels, um, like represented by the, um, by the um, standard deviations um, sigma. So 
we can see from the left of this figure, which corresponds to the high signal to noise ratio regime, that um, this um, like uh, least square optimization um, produce uh, like room mean square error of um, the reconstructed signal that scales um, uh, like with uh, uh, with um, the with um, the sigma of a slope of one. So this corresponds to the case um, that um, n um, scales similarly to one over um, sigma, uh, one over SNR. Um, because um, because in the like rooming square um, error, we, we take the square root. So um, this case, um, it's the same um, as the case that we know um, their individual occurrences in, um, in the low measurement. So the interesting part comes on the right of this figure that uh, when the noise level is high, say the signal to noise ratio is low, then um, the slope of the rooming square error, it, it's um, like uh, scales as uh, like a value of three um, with, the stand, with the sigma of the noise level. So um, this uh, it's consistent with our prediction that we need uh, up to like the third order autocorrelation in order to solve for um, the underlying short signal X. And um, so we know that this um, method of uh, autocorrelation analysis to reduce um, from like um, the original long measurement to like a set of autocorrelations has uh, the following benefits. First, uh, we only need to uh, like scan through our, our data once to produce these autocorrelations. And this enables us to uh, like come up with like a pipeline to streamline the data processing and um, to, like, um, to do it like in an online fashion. Um, the other benefit is that um, as long as we are given sufficient data, uh, we can handle um, data of arbitrarily low uh, signal to noise ratio um, when we are able to accurately estimate the autocorrelations. So that means um, like compared to like, like other methods uh, that um, identifying the individual locations um, of the signal occurrences in the long measurement, we can deal with like uh, arbitrarily low signal to noise ratio um, in, in our case. So after discussing um, the one D version of the multi-detection, multi-target detection model, we move um, to the case um, in the 2D image. So here you can see um, like a large um, image M. So, um, this um, large image consists of like many uh, like identical copies of uh, a smaller image, um, but with like also with like unknown rotation of each individual image. So here we assume that uh, the individual uh, smaller image are also like well separated, which means um, they are separated by um, at least uh, one diameter of the smaller image. And uh, our goal is to like estimate the individual um, image without knowing their um, like uh, locations or like uh, or implant rotations. And uh, we know that um, in the case when the underlying smaller image, it's not rotated say they are um, all like uh, showing up in this larger noisy image at um, the same pose. We can estimate uh, the image from just the second order autocorrelation of um, the larger image. And this actually corresponds to the phase retrieval problem um, like um, in the non-periodic signal, non -periodic signal. And, um, and uh, because um, the second order autocorrelation um, corresponds to the information we would obtain from the like Fourier intensity um, of the measurement. So um, 
we know that um, it's um, feasible to use um, some off the shelf um, like face retrieval algorithms to solve for the um, solve for the smaller image when there's no implant rotation of individual images. But here we um, consider the more complicated case that um, each individual image can be rotated um, like, uh, like with about their own uh, like body axis. So um, we reduce our data in the same way um, we did in the 1D case where we calculate the like uh, the high order autocorrelations of our large noisy image. Say um, for the first order autocorrelation A1, we simply sum up the pixel values of the large noisy image. And this gives us an estimate of the sum of pixel values of the underlying small um, image. For the second order autocorrelation of the large, um, large um, image, we um, do pixel-wise multiplication of the large image with um, its, uh, one of its shifted copy and then sum up the product to get the second order autocorrelation. And um, from the assumption of uh, well separation of um, the smaller images, we can see that this gives an estimate of the rotational average of the second order autocorrelation for the small image. The same applies to the third, to the case of the third order autocorrelation that um, the third order autocorrelation of the large image gives an estimate of the rotational average of the third order um, autocorrelation of the smaller image. And like before here, we restrict the shifts to be uh, like um, this, to be within um, the size of individual small of the smaller image, the diameter of the smaller image. And um, from these reduced um, data of um, the first three orders of autocorrelation, we um, also like solve um, like a least square problem to fit for the underlying smaller image to um, to get their um, to to get the reconstruction. And because here uh, these invariants are uh, like um, indifferent of um, like uh, their individual implant rotation. So we may end up with uh, like, um, like a reconstruction with arbitrary rotational angle uh, with respect to the point. And um, in this figure, I show you like two um, two um, different um, sets of um, data points. The dashed one um, are the, just like the reduced um, like invariants um, from the autocorrelation analysis. And um, the, the line um, above shows the results of the reconstruction. And here, instead of um, doing the reconstruction with um, respect to various noise levels, we fix the noise level and increase the number of um, images we use to generate those uh, autocorrelations. And we can see uh, that um, from the law of uh, large numbers that um, the relative error would scale as the inverse of square root of, number of numbers of images. Okay, so after discussing um, the simplified uh, multi-target detection uh, model with um, like 1D signals and 2D images, we can then focus on like the main motivation of this uh, multi-target detection model, which is the, uh, the reconstruction problem in cryo-electron microscopy. So in the past 10 years, uh, cryo-electron microscopy uh, or cryo-EM has evolved um, to be an important high resolution technique to determine the structures of um, proteins. And um, why it's important to know um, the structures of protein? Because um, we, when we are able to um, know the, um, the structures um, of um, the protein molecules at high resolution, we can then study like the dynamics of um, these proteins, like 
how they would move in response to um, some like um, binding small molecules or some uh, like invading um, like external, uh, like um, say external objects like viruses. So um, this will help um, the design of drugs that targets the specific um, like active sites in the structure of these, um, these um, protein molecules. Um, like as a notable example, it's the use of um, CryoEM to help um, like address the pandemic. So here, um, the figure on the right, we can see uh, uh, like each um, small, um, small um, like the, the, the COVID virus. And uh, the green dot uh, on the surface of each uh, virus, it's the spike protein um, that um, these viruses use to, um, to infect um, people. So um, with CrowEM, um, scientists have been able to resolve the like atomic structure of these um, spike proteins along with other like membrane protein complexes um, of these um, viruses and uh, help us to design like uh, um, useful like anti useful like vaccines or drugs that help treat um, patients. So um, the basic uh, we can we can think of the the. Um, image formation of an electron microscope as um, the following. We have the electron source um, emitted by the electron microscope. And here's uh, uh, like Mickey Mouse represented like uh, uh, the molecular like electric potential of a protein with some like uh, orientation denoted by a three by three rotation uh, matrix R. The, um, measurement of um, an electron microscope would be like the tomographic projection of the electric potential convolved with um, the point spread function, which is like uh, uh, characteristics of um, the, the optical instrument uh, of the, here, the um, electron microscope, further uh, contaminated by noise. Uh, and this is like um, the, and the, the end result of um, the measurement in uh, in uh, electron microscope. And how do we like reconstruct the structure of um, the molecule from such um, tomographic measurements? Here comes in the Fourier slice theorem. From the uh, electron microscope, we get the 2D tomographic projection of um, the 3D object. So here we um, let me um, like ignore the effect of the point spread function um, for now. From the 2D projection image, we can implement the 2D Fourier transform. And then this 2D uh, Fourier slice would correspond to the, um, the central slice of the 3D Fourier transform of the original object. That means uh, if we are able to collect um, such um, 2D projections of the original 3D object at um, several different orientations, we can assemble the corresponding 2D Fourier slices at their uh, like um, corresponding orientations in 3D to um, like uh, to fill in the 3D um, Fourier transform of the original object and then implement an inverse Fourier transform to get the structure of the original 3D um, object. But the thing is, um, our, um, like our target uh, here, the protein molecules are extremely small, usually of the scales of like, just like several nanometers. So it's uh, impossible to uh, like individually handle these um, protein molecules um, to be at like specific orientation in the uh, electron microscope. So how they are presented to the electron microscope is that these um, proteins would be frozen in a thin layer of um, vitreous ice uh, at unknown locations and unknown uh, like orientations. So, uh, and then like, uh, after uh, 
like the, the resulting image uh, would contain the 2D projections at unknown orientations of these um, proteins. So here, uh, an important assumption is that the individual proteins are identical to each other uh, with um, very small, very um, like structure variations. So uh, we can then pick the individual 2D projections from the large uh, measurement and then um, find their uh, like corresponding orientations and then um, use Fourier slice theorem to reconstruct the structure of the protein. So here's like the basic uh, workflow of uh, Crowley data analysis. Then you might ask, why do we, why do we then um, need um, the, all the uh, fuss about the autocorrelation analysis? So it's because uh, these proteins are extremely susceptible to the incident electron beam. Um, so uh, we can calculate the electron dose of individual protein as the ratio of um, the absorbed electron energy by the molecular weight. So when um, the proteins, uh, when the size of the proteins gets smaller and smaller, um, they are they become extremely susceptible to the um, incoming um, electron beam. So we would expect that. Um, um, in order not to damage um, the protein structure, the um, resulting projection images would be very hard to detect in the resulting uh, like noisy measurement when the proteins are very small. And um, you might uh, think of this um, like similar to the setting of the autocorrelation analysis where you have like individual signals embed embedded in a large, uh, in a long measurement without knowing their um, individual locations. And this is why uh, this autocorrelation analysis is useful. It's used to address the case uh, that we want to reconstruct the protein structure without um, um, like being able to detect their individual locations in the, in the um, measurement of an electron microscope. So um, like as a first attempt to address this uh, reconstruction problem in CryoEM using autocorrelation analysis, we consider a case that the orientation of proteins are restricted with respect to the 2D um, vitreous isolate. So here you can uh, think of each pyramid represent an individual protein and the only degrees of freedoms for these um, proteins are just um, like um, translations within the plant and also like um, in-plant rotations with respect to the um, plant normal. So um, we want to know if we are, if we are able to use um, the autocreation analysis to reconstruct the protein structure with these um, restricted rotations. So um, in the case when we um, like, um, illuminate the electron beam um, like perpendicular to the 2D ice layer, we can get like several projection images of the individual protein. But since um, these proteins uh, like has a have a preferred orientation, so what we would get would be the same 2D projection uh, like of um, in the same view, just with like different implant rotation. And this corresponds to um, the model of uh, like multi-target detection with um, 2D images. And uh, from the Fourier slice theorem, we only get to know uh, like a specific Fourier slice uh, without um, being able to access the 3D volume of the protein. So uh, we have to like use a different experimental scheme for this, uh, where we tilt um, the the um, ice there by some angle theta and, um, and take the um, image of the vitreous ice. So here, because um, each um, protein, uh, it has a preferred orientation to the ice layer, uh, to the vitreous ice. So we get to sample like a larger fraction of the 3D Fourier transform of the protein. So visually, 
um, these Fourier slices would assemble uh, like the 3D would comprise would be comprised of the 3D uh, Fourier space except for two uh, missing cones due to the the tilt angle of um, of the of the of the sample. So um, here the half opening angle of the missing cone it's um, 90 degrees minus theta, and um, due to like uh, experimental limitation. Uh, this data cannot be can only be made as large as like 60 degrees. So we uh, would have to like um, afford some missing information in this um, setup anyway. But uh, we also get to like um, access a large fraction of the 3D volume by um, like tilting the, the sample uh, uh, at some um, tilt angle theta. So here's uh, our numerical simulation. We get um, like some protein structure from the protein data bank. And then, uh, and then um, like we, we simulate an experiment um, when the proteins have a preferred orientation to the substrate and the substrate is tilted at some angle, say six, 60 degrees in our case. And then we generate the resulting noisy measurement. So uh, in this figure on the right, the signal to noise ratio uh, corresponds to one uh, in this case. And uh, you can uh, still see the, uh, the projection images in this large noisy image. But uh, as long as the, the signal to noise ratio gets uh, smaller to the case like say 0.1, then it, it could be very challenging to identify their individual locations. So from the noisy measurements, we uh, calculate the, like say the first three orders of autocorrelations um, to reduce our data. Uh, and then, um, so here um, the, the autocorrelations gives us the rotational average of um, the autocorrelations of the um, protein projections. So here I denote the rotation angles by alpha and alpha corresponds to like say like different orientations for the um, Fourier slices um, like represented in this uh, figure uh, with like two missing double cones with, with like two missing cones. And then from the estimated uh, like high order autocorrelations, we can um, like solve the optimization problem to um, to um, like to optimize with respect to the 3D electric potential of the protein um, to fit the autocorrelation. Uh, here, uh, because of the, um, the missing information due to the missing cone, we may have to use um, either some like say prior knowledge of the protein size to have a support constraint or to like uh, supplement um, the reconstruction of the optimization um, like with some regularization. Um, for example, uh, we can assume that the uh, electric potential is smooth in space. Um, so we can add the regularization to minimize the grade, the norm of gradient um, as an example. So here's the result um, of our um, numerical simulation using the small protein myoglobin, uh, which is a protein um, like, uh, uh, abundant in our muscles. So the, um, the structure in gray shows the ground truth um, volume of myoglobin and the yellow one, um, it's our reconstruction from um, like um, data collected at um, 60 um, degrees tilt angle. Uh, we use like um, 1.2 medium molecules in total with uh, the signal to noise ratio equals to one like I showed you before. And uh, the ground truth was generated at a resolution of um, five Armstrong. And our reconstruction uh, was able to achieve um, like a resolution of seven Armstrong. And I suppose uh, the degradation of resolution um, is due to um, like both uh, reasons. The first one is that uh, it's due to the missing um, information due to the missing call. And also um, this, um, 
um, degradation could also be due to like noise um, presented in the in the micrograph, and this can hopefully be reduced by like uh, adding more um, like data to um, estimate the autocorrelations. So in summary, um, the studies of the multi-target detection models um, help us understand um, how we can use um, the autocorrelation analysis um, to like um, estimate the underlying um, signals or images without knowing their individual locations. And um, this gives a way to um, like address the reconstruction um, problem in cryo-EM without knowing the individual locations of the protein projections. Um, but throughout this talk, um, the, all my results are based on the assumption that the signals or images are well separated in space, which, which may not be realistic uh, in, in, the, in, the, in, in real world. So um, we might be able to like relax this assumption um, by like uh, incorporating the cross correlation between neighbors um, in our model of uh, autocorrelation of the calculation of autocorrelation. And actually um, in the 1D case, um, like um, um, as a separate work, uh, I also like consider the case that uh, the like underlying short signals can have an arbitrary distance um, like um, arbitrary like separation and uh, we can like incorporate uh, like a, uh, like radio distribute like, a similar concept um, of the radio distribution function to um, to estimate uh, how the neighbors would correlate with each other and hopefully this idea could be gen to could, could be generalized to the uh, more complicated case in either like 2D multi-target detection or um, the crowd em reconstruction problem to help um, remove that uh, assumption of uh, well separation. And in the end, um, we would uh, ultimately to put this method into use um, to uh, solve like protein structures, we would have to think of a way to like denoise the autocorrelations to help us uh, reduce the number of uh, required um, data to estimate the autocorrelation, because um, as you may know, um, these um, like proteins are like very valuable, um, and biologists would not agree to give you like as much data as possible to accurately uh, estimate the autocorrelations, um, like in the low SNR case. So we have to think some way to make use of the underlying um, like structure of the autocorrelations to um, denoise um, themselves. Um, thanks for um, the attention. I'm happy to take um, questions. Thank you very much, TM. So thanks a lot. Right, so joining us at this early time uh, in California, I'll stop.